Hey, uh, in a number of projects I got suggestions from people who work with me, programmers, uh, to implement uh, a so-called pre-commit hooks, which, as you may know, um, stop your git commit or git push operation, I don't even know exactly, uh, if uh, there's a build failures. So basically how it works, on my local, on my, on my laptop, I change the code, I mm, commit it, and then I try to push it to a uh, repository or even, even at the phase of the commit, let's, let's assume it works like this. So every time I finish my code, I do git commit, it starts the, the script and the script runs uh, the full build and the build says your code is not clean because you violated some rules, maybe some unit tests are broken and that's why the commit fails. So please fix it and, and after you fix it, then you do the commit again and then you succeed and then you push it to the repository and then it goes to, uh, to, the, to the server. I don't like this approach and I can explain you why I think it's wrong. So first, the first question is how do you develop the code? Do you commit to master branch or you work with the feature branches? If you commit to master branch, then, uh, then you're doing it wrong. If you commit to master branches, then the, the checks like this, which stay on the laptops of programmers, they're not gonna save you from the mistakes people make because one programmer will have the check, another programmer will not have this check. And it will be very difficult for you, or maybe impossible for you, to guarantee that everybody has the same check installed. In most cases, they will not have the checks because they want to do it faster, they want to develop faster. So some or many programmers, they will just disable the check and you will get broken code into the master branch. Then you will chase your programmers, you will ask why did you disable the check, how could you do this to me, and these stories will never end. So if you do the master branch development, then first you're doing it very wrong. We all know that we shouldn't allow programmers to push to master branch. And second, these commits, these commit, this pre-commit hooks, they will not help you uh, because, like I explained, people are irresponsible in most cases. If you do feature branches, and then this is my branch, so I'm a programmer, so I check out uh, the master, I make a new branch, and then I work with this branch, then why do you stop me from committing my code to my own branch? I believe that development has to be extremely fast, as fast as possible. We have, I had many videos about that, explaining that the speed is the most important quality, the most important <laughs> a parameter of a, of a programming process. The faster we go, the better. The quality is the concern of the server. So the server has to reject our, our code if the quality is not high enough. But we, when we stay on, on, on our development workstations, on my laptop, I should not think about quality at all. I should just be developing fast as fast as possible. If I want my code to be checked on each commit, then I will run the checks on each commit before I do the, uh, the git commit. I'm not doing this. In my opinion, it's wrong. How I develop, I start the branch, I make many dirty commits, so you cannot build the, the entire product on each commit. I just commit, commit, commit. The, 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 like the way I develop, I try to commit uh, in order to save my code to the disk. It's kind of a paranoia. Thing. So I just don't want to lose the code, I don't want to, uh, to, to move too far in the coding because you know if you move too far at some point of time you decide to roll back but if, if the amount of changes is so big then rolling back means rolling back everything and you don't want to lose the entire work of a day. So that's why I commit every, sometimes every five minutes. So I do a little like small change and I commit. I'm not pushing even, I commit to the branch locally. Sometimes I push the branch but it's still my branch. So I commit in order to, I use git commit as a, as a helper, as an instrument, as a tool for me, in order to, uh, to enable fast uh, and easy and quick roll, uh, rollback. That's what I use git commit. And if this git commit will, will, will ask me to make the code clean every time, it will completely destroy the idea because I don't want the code to be clean on each, on each time I push something, some, some temporary, some intermediate uh, changes to, to my brain. I want these changes to go there faster and, and then at the end, when the whole branch is ready, maybe today, maybe in a few days, because sometimes I work with the branch for a few days, then when the branch is ready, then I start thinking about how to make it clean so that the server accepts my, my branch and I send a pull request and then in the pull request there is some script, some mechanism which starts checking my pull request and then it tells me, okay, your code is wrong. But if you will stop me multiple times down the road, it will just make my development slower. It's not going to increase the quality. The quality, again, 
is the concern of the server, it's not my concern, it shouldn't be. It should be my concern only when I send the pull request. At that point of time, okay, the server rejects me, then I start, uh, start asking myself questions how to make the quality better. But until then, I just move as fast as possible. So forcing me to, increase, to, to, um, to obey the quality rules, to follow the quality rules so many times during the development of the branch will only slow me down for no reason. Because it's my branch, it's my local development. So that's it. So don't do it. That's my bottom line. Don't do this. It's a completely wrong idea, in my opinion. Like a wrong approach to the process of software development. You know, blocking commits because the quality is low. But blocking pull requests because the quality is, is low. That's a perfect idea. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.